We have Segment Anything from Meta, Sparks of AGI from Microsoft, Stable Diffusion XL from Stability, and Mini GPT-4 from Kaust. Can GPT-4 perform neural architecture search? Are generative search engines riddled with attribution errors? Why do some AI researchers dismiss the potential risks to humanity and a viral TikTok video of a driverless car being pulled over by the police? Welcome to AI News. Meta AI Research has released Segment Anything. The authors introduce a new task called Promptable Segmentation, where the model predicts a mask from inputs consisting of an image together with either points, a bounding box, a region, or a text description. Next, there is SAM, the Segment Anything model that combines a chunky image encoder and a lightweight prompt encoder to predict masks. The authors also released the Segment Anything 1B dataset, containing more than a billion mask predictions spanning 11 million images, available for research usage. Let's see the model in action by using the SAM web demo on this Cambridge May bump scene. We'll start with interactive mode. We can see that even on challenging regions, such as the similarly coloured bright white tops of the rowers, the model does well. We can also draw bounding boxes around the objects to segment them. Here again, the results are solid, though with perhaps a few minor wobbles. Finally, we have the fun option to segment everything. The results are very impressive, particularly the hull of the boat here, which is highly fragmented. Next, I'll briefly mention the Sparks of AGI paper by Microsoft Research, which was originally released in March but received a recent update. The paper contains many interesting experiments. Two quotes from the paper which I think capture the essence of the work are first, overall GPT-4 still has many limitations and biases. However, GPT-4 challenges a considerable number of widely held assumptions about machine intelligence and exhibits emergent behaviours and capabilities whose sources and mechanisms are, at this moment, hard to discern precisely. The paper conducts many qualitative experiments. Examples that highlight its understanding of visual objects include drawing a unicorn in ticks and generating SVG diagrams. It can also implement a custom optimizer in PyTorch and generate a somewhat complex 3D HTML game in JavaScript. Perhaps the most interesting experiments in the paper are the failure cases for GPT-4. Here is one. Consider the identity 9 times 4 plus 6 times 6 equals 72. Can you modify exactly one integer, and not more than that, on the left-hand side of the equation so that the right-hand side becomes 99? Let's think step by step. Write down a plan, and then write down your solution as the solution is A times B plus C times D. Now, a human with some experience of arithmetic will typically solve this after thinking about it for 15 seconds or so. We need to increase the left-hand side by 27. 27 divided by 9 is 3, so we need to add 3 to the 4 that appears second. Although sometimes GPT-4 gets lucky and finds the solution, most of the time it fails to execute some part of its plan. It ends up reporting some wacky solution that involves some broken arithmetic, like asserting that 9 times 4 plus 6 times 10 is 99. This experiment, together with others, leads the authors to suggest that it seems that the autoregressive nature of the model, which forces it to solve problems in a sequential fashion, sometimes poses a more profound difficulty that cannot be remedied by simply instructing the model to find a step-by-step -step solution. There is an insightful talk on YouTube by Sebastian Bubeck, the lead author of this work, which I recommend looking at for further details. Next, we have Stable Diffusion XL, the latest image generation model from Stability AI. The release notes highlight a greater capability to produce legible text and the ability to use shorter prompts to create descriptive imagery. Okay, let's give the latest model a try. I'll prompt it with a white sign that says Computer Vision FTW in front of a cityscape sunrise. Let's check we are using STXL. Yep, okay, here we go. Dream. Dreaming. Computer vision. Vision. Hmm, there's definitely something going on, and it has nailed the cityscape sunrise. Still a little way to go with the text, I think. Next, we have Mini GPT-4. The authors note that although GPT-4 has exhibited remarkable capabilities, the methods behind its exceptional abilities are still a mystery. They go on to say that we believe that these superior skills may stem from the utilisation of a more advanced large language model. Building on this observation, Mini GPT-4 takes in an image, such as this logo, passes it through a frozen Qformer and VIT sourced from Blip2, 
and maps the result through a learned linear layer which produces an input to a frozen Vicuna model. The result is an impressively dense description of the image. Given this meme and a request to explain why the meme is funny, MiniGPT4 comes up with a pretty good explanation. What's particularly striking about this work is the low compute burden. Because it only involves training a linear layer to adapt pre-trained models, it's fast. There is a pre-training stage that takes 10 hours on four A100 GPUs. Then, after some cleanup with ChatGPT, there is a fine-tuning stage which takes, as the authors put it, a brief seven minutes to complete on a single A100. Code and models are available. One last point about this model. There has been some discussion about the naming. On the GitHub repo, Ian Danforth notes that the name is misleading given that the project is not related to GPT-4. SFLC2 dryly points out that MiniGPT-4 is related to GPT-4 given that Vicuna was trained on data from ShareGPT.com which collects discussions from ChatGPT. On the day I'm recording this, the exact fine-tuning dataset used by Vicuna is not officially public, so it's not clear whether those chats included GPT-4 discussions or those of the older model. But you get the idea of the somewhat tongue-in-cheek point they are making. Next, we have a paper looking at whether GPT-4 can perform neural architecture search. I think this work is interesting, but you should note that my view is biased because I'm a co-author, so naturally I think it's interesting. One question posed by the paper is whether there is the potential for GPT-4 to serve as a general purpose research tool that substantially reduces the need for domain expertise. The method starts from a prompt encoding the problem. This is fed to GPT-4, which outputs an architecture configuration. A Python program evaluates the quality of the architecture and returns its accuracy back to the model for a handful of iterations. Some preliminary results suggest that this method is viable, at least on relatively small-scale benchmarks. The paper also flags some limitations of the study. Reproducibility is an issue because the experiments use the OpenAI API, which could change its pre-processing or post-processing at any time, and the researcher would not know. Since the training set of GPT-4 is unknown, there is a risk of test set contamination, and the overall behaviour of the model is somewhat inscrutable. The paper notes that the search results may have implications for AI safety. Next, we have a work on evaluating verifiability in generative search engines from Lu, Zhang and Liang at Stanford. The authors note that a prerequisite trait of a trustworthy generative search engine is verifiability. They evaluate Bing Chat, Neva AI, Perplexity AI and UChat. They exclude Google's Bard and OpenAI's ChatGPT since they do not provide citations and thus trivially have low verifiability. It is found that responses from existing search engines are fluent and appear informative, but frequently contain unsupported statements and inaccurate citations. On average, a mere 51.5% of generated sentences are fully supported by citations, and only 74.5% of citations support their associated sentence. Putting it somewhat mildly, they state that we believe that these results are concerningly low. Given the role that these systems play for information-seeking users, and given their facade of trustworthiness. Next, we have an article from David Kruger, an assistant professor at the University of Cambridge, asking why do some AI researchers dismiss the potential risks to humanity? The piece discusses arguments why we should take the risks of AI seriously. For example, one basic argument is by analogy. Humans' cognitive abilities allowed us to outcompete other species for resources, leading to many extinctions. AI systems could likewise deprive us of the resources we need for our survival. David points out that AI X risk is admittedly more speculative than important social issues with present day AI like bias and misinformation, but the basic solution is the same, regulation. He also directly addresses what he describes as the ugliest reason researchers may dismiss AI X risk, funding. Essentially, every AI researcher, myself included, has received funding from big tech. Consequently, he writes, at some point, society may stop believing reassurances from people with such strong conflicts of interest and conclude, as I have, that their dismissal betrays wishful thinking rather than good counterarguments. I recommend reading the article in full. A quick roundup of other news. Elon Musk is creating an AI company called X.AI. Referring to the dominance of Google and OpenAI in an interview with Tucker Carlson and implications for AI safety, Musk said, I'll try to create a third option, and that third option, hopefully there's more good than harm. 
Google announced a merger of Google Brain and DeepMind with the updated organization called Google DeepMind to be led by Demis Hassabis. The Open Assistant project released a paper on their work to date, describing the large dataset they have gathered and some preliminary findings from instruction fine-tuning a model. TechCrunch announced that Anthropic is raising funds to take on OpenAI. Specifically, they report on an investor deck describing plans to train Claude Next, a model that is 10 times more capable than today's most powerful AI, but that this will require a billion dollars in spending over the next 18 months. The Machiavelli benchmark uses choose-your-own-adventure games to evaluate agents' tendencies to be power-seeking and commit ethical violations. Bill Gates has shared a blog post explaining how he thinks we'll reach a tipping point with autonomous vehicles in the next decade. The blog includes a video of a trip around London in congested traffic with Wave. Relative to previous fast-growing libraries like Hugging Face Transformers, AutoGPT continues its near-vertical trajectory, blowing past 100k GitHub stars this week. And last, but not least, we have a viral TikTok video shared on the account of Johnny Romano 3, of a self-driving Waymo taxi being pulled over Sir, by Sir, we cannot move, we're sorry. This car <laughs> won't let us move. <laughs> we, we're not driving. He's trying to, <laughs> sir, there's no one there. In the video description, you can find links to slides and mentioned articles. I hope you have a wonderful day.